was quite a powerful song, you know, back when it was done. But looking at it now in the context of finding out Rolf Harris is a pedophile, it's kind of incredibly disturbing to, but more disturbing than normal to actually to go, my God, here he is, the Australian sort of icon, you know, of uh, leading children in a, in a song about protecting themselves against pedophilia and child abuse is led by a pedophile. It's, it's even hard to fathom what kind of mindset a person would have to be in to participate in that knowing the kind of things that they did. It has been an amazing week, I think, really, for Australians, finding out that Rolf Harris is a pedophile. I did read a comment that someone actually wrote that it was either going to be children or animals. But, you know, I don't know, I was really shocked, you know, not shocked that he was by the conviction or anything, because I think eventually that became fairly evident that there's something pretty sinister going on, not just with Rolf Harris, but the whole Jimmy Savile kind of cover up of stuff going on in the television industry, particularly in the UK in the 80s, is quite frightening. I think the shock is that someone that we've all trusted, not just those children that, you know, he interfered with. I'm talking about a man that we were all encouraged to make part and love as part of our Australian identity. He was like our Uncle Rolf. He was the man that, in a sense, we've all bounced on his lap, haven't we? Because we've all trusted that this was a good man. And I suppose when you ask those questions in light of all the stories of child abuse and pedophilia that comes out many years later of how could it have happened, how could we have not have seen the signs, then I suppose you've only got to look as far as us to the fact that we did exactly the same thing. None of us picked up that Rolf Harris, the man that we had children flocking to with his stupid little wobble board, singing those you know, lovely little songs that, you know, part of our idyllic childhood was in fact a pedophile. Our parents encouraged us, our parents' parents. We, he had an OBE and an MBE and a CBE. He had every BE. He was a completely celebrated and well awarded pedophile. So, I don't know, it's kind of, it is kind of shocking. It's kind of like finding out that Farlap was a goat or something, isn't it? It's kind of like finding out, you know, Dame Edna's a woman, or, you know, it's like a complete, like, he is part of our mythology. I, I remember having this conversation with my husband a while ago, and he couldn't believe, he was going, oh, early on, he's going, no, it can't, it can't be true. Because part of you doesn't want to believe that this, this character that you, you actually associated with these really fond childhood memories could, in fact, be a creepy, sinister, disgusting, child, molesting pervert. While he sings songs like, you know, Two Little Boys and we all teared up because it was quite an emotional song and all those great Australiana songs with these stupid little wobble board and we went, oh, that's part of being Australian. Part of being, we celebrate our pedophiles here. <laughs> anyway, I think it is kind of incredibly sad and horrific for those for people that have been actually, you know, we've all been exposed to Rolf. You know, and I sort of feel now that, in a sense, um, I think he's got an experience what I think he really does deserve, and that is how how he may be treated in prison, albeit only five years and probably down to a two-and-a-half-year sentence, that a man of 84, that's going to be pretty tough. And generally other inmates don't treat pedophiles that well. I don't think a few bars of Time a Kangaroo Down is going to get him in very good stead with anyone, is it, really? And it was on looking at that, I actually had a look back, and I was trying to examine what was it about Rolf Harris that elevated him to such incredible prestige. I mean, he painted a portrait of the Queen. Actually, the Queen sat for him. I didn't think she sat on his lap. She's much too old for him, much too old for Rolf. I don't think he tried to goose her or put his hand up his skirt, although God knows with Rolf. You know, he, he, how did he ingratiate? It wasn't even that. The songs were a bit shit, really, weren't they? And he had, like, a wobble board. And, in fact, he was incredibly racist, you know. In fact, on the wobble board, there's often paintings that he's done of, of like, you know, weird little caricatures of Aboriginals. And it wasn't until I went through a YouTube thing of, of Time a Kangaroo Down that I, I heard a verse that I had never heard before, which said, Let my abos go loose, Lou. Let my abos go loose. They're of no further use, Lou. 
let my abos go loose all together now. I went, oh my God, that is part of the Australiana idiom of what we see as being true blue and dinky dye and okay. So I guess it's no surprise when we institutionalise racism as part of our identity that we've also accepted a pedophile. <laughs> so anyway, all I'm saying is goodbye, Rolf. <clears throat> I do hope his victims get adequate and full compensation. They'll be taking paintings down everywhere. Perhaps they should auction them off and give the proceeds to his victims. He's so creepy. Don't think I can watch this. Bye, Rolf.